Thank you, JSP. Thank you, celebrity panelists. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape. Brought to you by Columbia Care. Mohamed Juma, 26 years of age. Josh Savera is 29. He's also two inches taller. But it is Mohamed Juma with the three-inch reach advantage in the arms. Savera, the longer legs. Where there, there is Josh Silvera, has an excellent grappling background. Not only is he a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and son of Conan Silvera, but he also wrestled at Arizona State University. So that's a D1 program. So this guy can really get it done in the grappling department, but don't sleep on his striking as well. He's very good at integrating his striking into his grappling. You see the fight odds have slipped down there to minus 1,200 instead of minus 1,500, so. Ian's reckless betting with raised money at least turns a slightly larger profit if it hits. <laughs> and there is Guma, a guy out of his eight wins, eight are by knockout, and he likes to do it early on. So watch for an early and fast start from Guma. Our referee overseeing this final bout, Andrew Glenn. Muhammad Guma in the light gray ballet Tudos. Josh Severa in the black trunks. Egypt versus Florida. You ready? Touch of the gloves and we are underway. Both men in a southpaw stance. Front kick there to up oh, from Severa. The left hand glances from Muhammad Guma. As you said, Kenny, this guy likes to get it done early. Big pass. Oh, nice leg kick there from Severa. And a high kick. Yeah, Guma's very quick. Looked like one of those jabs surprised Silvera there. And now Silvera in on that double. Oh, Guma was holding on to the cage there a little bit, but now big slam there by Silvera. And he lands right in side control. Guma goes to his belly to get out of it. Now he's got... Savannah choking Muhammad Guma. Squeezing tight, trying to get the tap here. Guma able to work back to his feet. Still sticking his fingers in that gauge. Yeah, the referee has not seen it there from that angle. Silvera in on that body lock, though, very deep. This is going to be a big takedown right into side control. Go Silvera. Yeah, he's back on the ground. Yes. Guma keeps grabbing onto the fence. Just can't help himself. Savetta goes to work with the right hand now. Oh, those are big shots there. Attempts the knee up high. Muhammad Guma's mouthpiece hanging halfway out. Blitzing attack here from Silvetta, who just does not let up on the pressure with the strikes or the grappling exchanges. Yeah, he's staying in tight, doesn't want to give that space to Guma to land that big shot. Nice knee up the middle there on the exit. Heavy leg kick there from Severo. Yeah, Silvera's finding good success there. Looks like a cut on the head of Severo. I wonder where that came from. Or maybe it's just wet hair. Can't tell. Two minutes gone already. Some energy expended by these two individuals. Another front kick there from Severa. Snaps the head back of Muhammad Guma. Yeah, so Vera's getting caught in that medium range. He needs to be all the way out or all the way in on that takedown. Big winging left hand there from Muhammad Guma. Short chopping hook there from Severa, who's now in on another takedown attempt. Underhooks here from Muhammad Guma. So Severa is so polished. He comes at you at so many different angles, right? Whether it's a takedown, whether when he puts you against the gate, he's always thinking. He's always thinking. Watch. He's going to switch. Watch. Told you. It's crazy. Absolutely is dictating the pace of this fight right now. Muhammad Guma accounting well for himself in these striking exchanges, though. Yeah, now Silvera doing a good job of getting all the way out, though. Just took a shot to the groin there. I mean, it's definitely the, the variety for me. He's doing everything. He's leg kicking low. 
knocked him down to the ground off a leg kick takedowns. We talked about this earlier, economy of motion. He's against the cage with a clinch, purposely getting the takedown, putting him down, dominant position, going for the back. We already seen a submission attempt. Yeah, there's that left hook kick that went a little too high. He was looking for that inside leg kick. And Josh taking his time as he should. Looks like he may be ready to go here. Careful, Time in. Here we go. Fight. I would say. Glenn will restart the action here. Two southpaws once again squaring off. He got kicked in the power source. He got five minutes. I would take 12. He took three. <laughs> it happened. But he's right back on it. They're like a wet blanket. He's kind of relentless. Love it. It looks like his power source is fine. <laughs> Mohamed Guma found himself <laughs> temporarily on his back and now back to his feet, but he's got Josh Silvera hanging heavy. Look at this, Guma trying to attack that Kimura there, trying to get that shoulder lock. See if he can turn into a reversal or submission here. Silvera's been here before, though. He's staying nice and calm, trying to transition to the back. Experience showing there, Kenny, because Josh Silvetta didn't even feel like he needed to use both hands to defend that. He just tucked the arm close, let Muhammad Guma try and wrench that arm around. Yeah, he just stayed heavy with his position, laid on the back here. And this is you know, a better position for the arm for Guma, but he's got that fence behind him, so he can't really do anything there. So Silvetta knows that. He's staying nice and calm. Where you can get yourself in trouble if you move yeah. too much, that's when you actually give the submission. Guma abandons the attempt, ends up with Silvera on his back. Ten seconds remaining here in round number one. Josh Silvera showing a lot of the arsenal in the first five minutes. Muhammad Guma not able to land that power punch. So six of his eight knockout victories, Kenny, have come in the first round. Silvera able to avoid that here. Silvera started off this fight with a big leg kick. He actually saw Guma as he walked back to his corner, Sean. He was limping on that leg. Excellent leg kick that actually took Guma off of his feet. There was a nice takedown of a body lock, got the angle, tripped out that left leg, got right into side control there. But I was still impressed with Guma's tenacity, his ability to get back to his feet and just make everything a little bit more difficult for Silvera. There was a nice teep to the face from Silvera. Well placed there. Seconds out. So one round Seconds gone. Out. Remember, the goal tonight, win a contract, become a millionaire. With an impressive enough performance, one of these four winners tonight will be invited to the PFL under contract, either on a developmental level, will they participate in showcase fights, or if you do enough, perhaps an invitation to the PFL regular season starting in April. Guma coming in behind ones and twos again. Nice work by Savannah to avoid it. Tosses a knee up the middle. And another. And another. Guma able to avoid the majority of the damage from those knees. And that's that middle range where Silvera really needs to watch out there. This is where he should level change and go for that double leg. Guma with a shot to the body there, a hook to the body. Guma's sneaky fast shot. Oh, nice double. Uh oh, look at this. Guma getting on top here. Savannah looking to hang on the neck here of Muhammad Guma. Guma dropping down, adjusting to a single leg. But his head's on the outside. Yeah, I'm not sure he wants to get into this type of game here against Silvera, though. He certainly looks like the bigger man in this clinch position. But he's, I think he's wasting a lot of energy. He wants space where he can strike. 
and he's initiating a, a grappling position. Yeah, from Josh Savetta. Grabbed it from the standing position. Guma trying to pull his head out. A squeeze here from Savetta. Now, now, actually, Guma's in a better position here on the side. He can, he's not, he's not really getting choked here. He's out, yep. Stoppage here from Andrew Glenn. I'm confused what the stoppage is about. I think, I think Silvera was complaining about the fingers of Guma there. Pressing on the face, I, eye gouge? I, I think he was looking for like an eye gouge and Guma actually has been uh, disqualified, I believe, for utilizing a, an eye poke in the, in the past. Actually, Fishhook Andrew in his last Glenn fight. is taking a point away from Andrew Guma, whose fingers have gone through the cage yeah. more than Doctor. once tonight. Yeah, there it is. Fishhook in his last fight, he actually used a fishhook and was disqualified for it. And there's the clear angle, beautiful angle there by our cameraman. Trying to play dentist out there. That's no bueno. Unbelievable. That type of stuff happens at the bottom of an NFL pile all the time. <laughs> you just, it's not one-on-one, -on -one, though. It's a big pile. So, yeah. Oh, my Ray. goodness. He had his whole jaw. Is there any, are there any specific rules in the NFL that you're not allowed to do that? Because in MMA, fish hooking is definitely in the rule book. Not allowed. If you don't get caught, there's no rule. <laughs> My man went for a complete fish hook. Yeah. Full thumb, full commitment, 100% all in. It never happened to me, but I did bite the finger one time in the fight. Watch your fouls. You got to be honest. Time in, here we go. Fight! <laughs> mouthpiece in or mouthpiece out, oh. T-Wood. Back to the action we go. Josh Silvera, displeased to say the least with the development of that fish hook. Yeah, and given given Guma's history as well, he, he got disqualified for a fish hook in, in his last fight, so that does not look very good for Guma. Head outside single attempt here from Josh Severa. Guma trying to oh. return the favor of that guillotine pressure that we saw Severa attempting earlier in the round. Any real threat here, Kenny? Uh, not really, you know, for Silvera, he knows if he gets that takedown or if, or if Guma tries to go to his back, he just goes to the opposite side of his head. He gets his legs to the opposite side of his head, so didn't really seem too concerned there. And that's where you got to watch those fingers of Guma as well right in that clinch position. Silvera with another takedown attempt. Big time favorite, Josh Savera in this. Did we expect a more dominant performance? You know what, at least we hit the over in, uh, in half a fish hook. You know, I, I, look, I, I think Silvera is playing it a little bit safe here. You know, Guba is throwing some power behind those punches. I would have liked to have seen him advance his position, be able to hold it on the ground a little bit more. We still got a lot of fight left as he gets another takedown and hopefully we'll take the back. Still a lot of time for that finish. I think Silvera is showing a well-rounded skill set. There's been a lot of cage grabs. That fish hook, fish hook was definitely uh, different, but look for Silvera. I think he still can get this fight done before the end of the fight. Well, look, Kenny, we know that four winners tonight get narrowed down to two finalists. And one of those two finalists... Oh, look at this, Silvera trying to set up that arm triangle. Sorry, Sean. Has to impress the celebrity panelists and the fans. And potentially also president of fighter operations Ray Seffel to be awarded a contract as Silvera goes to the mount. Can he get a finish? We saw Bruce Soto with a finish earlier tonight. Is that going to be what it takes to guarantee yourself a contract? Uh, I do. I think that's what it's going to take. And this is where he can pull it off right now with 45 seconds left to go. He can set up this arm triangle. He's got his head underneath the arm, not able to pass that elbow across them. He likes to go back to some striking here. Josh Savannah got, 
Better get Mohammed Guma's hands off his face if he doesn't want to get fish hooked again. Look at that shit. So Vera complaining again. Throw the punches. Left hand coming down on the ear of Muhammad Guma. See, this is where Silvera should posture up and just start raining down blows. And there's a nasty right hammer fist from Josh Silvera, who appears to be taking it somewhat personally at this point. End of round two. Silvera will walk back to his corner. Muhammad Guma saved by the bell, perhaps, there at the end of round two. An eventful round, Kenny Flores. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot happened in that round, my goodness. And there's Silvera with a nice double leg takedown there. Gets that top position, but Guma able to get on top there. Nice reversal there by Guma. And then Silvera attempted that guillotine, wasn't able to get that high elbow on the other side though. Guma able to escape and then there's that illegal move there, that fish hook from Guma. Got a point taken away from him. Ray Lewis didn't like it. Feels like Jeremy Piven might be relying on things like fish hooks and eye gouges, something like that in a fight. I don't want to put that evil on him, but it just wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility. Our third and final round here in our final light heavyweight bout of the evening. A contract potentially on the line with the PFL here in season number four, starting in April. Josh Silvera, American top team representative and two division LFA champion. And the Black Trunks. All the way from Cairo in the Gray Valley Tudos. Guma looks pretty windy here. He's starting to drop his head, and just swing without really looking at the target here. Silvera with that slow pressure game, just kind of trying to eat up that space and get to that clinch position. Silvera coming in behind a couple of strikes. Both of them landed. I'd be curious to see if Josh Silvera abandoned the wrestling pursuit and just tried to strike his way to a victory here, how this might go. Again, I'm talking about being motivated for a finish because of what happened with Rusi Soto earlier and the flying knee. So has got to think his way in a little bit to try to shut down that offense from Guma. There's a nice left hand from Silvera. Body kick down from Silvera. Guma continuing to just circle to his left. Nice level change there. Excellent timing on that from Josh Silvera. Drags behind the Guma to the ground. Oh, Rear naked choke looks to be in. Is it under the chin? Mohamed Guma getting flattened out, switches to the short choke. Is this the end here, Kenny Florian? Yeah, it sure is. He's underneath the neck. A squeeze from Josh Silvera. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Flattened out, Mohamed Guma. Guma's on tap. Guma only tap. Guma only tap. Guma only tap. Josh Silvera elicits the tap. Victorious in his PFL debut. Yeah, so Josh Silvera. No With a message for Mohamed Guma after the victory. Yeah, Silvera not happy about that foul, foul that took place in round two. Still upset about it, and probably rightfully so. Muhammad Guma. Holds on to the very end and taps. He just got, hey, listen, listen, Severo has too much in the in the arsenal. He's everywhere. He's, he's, he's well-rounded in, in a lot of things. And he just has too much, man. And Jeremy, in addition to his well-roundedness, yeah. he had the ability to deal with adversity. Grabbing on the fence, fish hooking, all different types of stuff. We couldn't even see in the left corner because we was blocked. But it was a lot of illegal stuff yeah. happening. He still kept composure, got the finish. Yeah. And he was, re he was really angry but he didn't give in to his emotions, and he closed the show. Yeah, yep, yep. Did it really well.
Yeah, really, Sean, it was a variety of weapons, and a lot of it came, obviously, in the form of his grappling. But his takedowns, his ability to get superior positions, like going right to the back, and here's what he did in round three. This is what won him the fight. Able to get that form underneath the neck of Guma, and there's the tap, double tap. There it is again. Nice job by Silvera, being persistent, stayed on that choke. And then there he is talking to him, said, you, you fish hooked me, you tried to poke me in the eye. And you know what, Silvera kept his cool, could have been nasty himself. There's Ray Lewis. He liked what he saw. He impressed the big man. It's Tyron Woodley, very intense. <laughs> And Parker likes what he sees. <laughs> That's a fired up Jeremy Piven. He says it's all over. Good stuff. All right, let's go to Sean O'Connell, who's in the cage. Sean, go ahead. All right, we'll bring our fighters to the center of the cage. Make this one official. Your winner, via stoppage by rear naked choke, one minute and 52 seconds into round number three, Josh Severa. Impressive performance from Josh Silvera. All right, Josh, come here. Let's talk about this. Yes, sir. An eventful fight, to say the least. We saw the fingers going into the cage, and then this is a first for me. I've been around the sport of mixed martial arts a long time. I have never actually seen a fish hooking foul. You've been around the sport a long time as well. Is that a first for you? That's a first, unless we were fighting in the street, then I've seen it plenty of times, but uh, that was the first time in the ring. You, know? you overcame the adversity not only of uh, the foul, but also, look, he, he was able to land a couple of nice strikes. We saw some great striking from you. Do you feel like you had an opportunity tonight to put all of your skills on display? Yeah, you know, um, it, I started a little slow, but um, I do what I do. You know, I, I do get my takedowns. I grapple. I keep constant pressure. Um, he came to fight, man. He flew all the way from Egypt, I believe, and he came ready, but we put in too much work on American Top Team. Uh, we go against adversity any time of the day, baby, any night. At the end there, after you elicited the tap and he rolled over, you had a couple of words to say. I know you were heated. What was your message to Muhammad Guma in that moment? Yeah, man, I've been competing uh, for a long time, man. Wrestling, toughest sport ever. Um, you know, you have to have good integrity, man. You know, I, I, fish hooking, you know, maybe, maybe his fingers slipped in my mouth, but, you know, poking my eyes and he was biting on me when I was trying to unmount. Little things like that, you know, I, I, I fight through it. It's not a big deal. But at the end, I had to let him know, like, you don't do that, man. You don't, you don't do that. We're all trying to make it to the top, you know, fight fair. All right, well, you passed that test tonight. Let's see what the celebrity panelists thought about your performance. We go to Julie Stewart-Binks for that input. Well, Sean, Josh just mentioned there, but he had to deal with a, a lot of shenanigans in this fight here tonight. And Tyron, you mentioned that there was adversity. What did you like about how he came back in this fight? What I like about diversity in this fight is that, one, you have to do it on the big lights. A lot of times you see people develop, you see them grow. They do that later on. You want to know now that if I put him in the tournament, if he's in the final, we could deal with adversity. He did with eye pokes, um, fish hooking, grabbing the cage. But he kept trying to finish, either with a leg kick, he had a guillotine choke a couple of times, and he kept going for head and arm triangle. He was trying to finish this the entire time, and that's what you need to do. Right, and he got it done tonight. Sean, back to you. Thank you. Tyron Woodley but mentioned you were searching for the finish. After seeing what happened in the action earlier tonight, did you feel like you needed a finish in order to keep yourself in the running for a PFL contract? Yeah, man, that's, that's the way I fight. 
is I always try to get fit, I always try to get the finish. I never try to leave it up to the judges. Uh, everyone knows that's that's a golden rule, man. You don't leave it up to the judges. I always get a finish, and uh, you know. Uh, I, I don't pay attention too much of what happened before me. Try to focus on my fight, get my finish, and uh, let's keep moving on, man. Let's get that contract. Still undefeated and victorious tonight, Josh Silvera. And when we 